1840 rolled around, the country was in such a deep depression that it would have been obvious to all observers that Van Buren was bound to lose, that the Whigs could have run anybody and beaten Van Buren. And if they had known that, the Whigs would have run Clay. But instead of nominating Henry Clay for president, the new Whig party chose William Henry Harrison because they believed he was the candidate who most resembled Andrew Jackson. Harrison had been a frontier general and an Indian fighter. But more importantly, he supported the rechartering of the Bank of the United States. The election of 1840 was a flamboyant affair, the first presidential campaign to feature open public rallies, songs, and slogans. They would roll out the cider barrel when Van Buren's people would start to speak, as well as uh, the image of the log cabin, and with chants of, Van, Van, he's a used up man. They called Van Buren Martin Van Ruin. In contrast, William Henry Harrison was touted by his old war nickname, which he got while fighting Indians at the Battle of Tippecanoe. Tippecanoe and Tyler too was the slogan. John Tyler, of course, was Harrison's running mate. One of the great symbols of the campaign of 1840 is the log cabin. William Henry Harrison wasn't born in a log cabin, but nonetheless, this becomes sort of the enduring symbol of that campaign. And another symbol that the uh, Whigs manipulate very successfully is the image of the English coach that Martin Van Buren allegedly rides in. And the Harrison supporters like to sing, in English coaches, he's no rider, but he can fight and drink hard cider. Harrison took his lumps from the Van Buren camp as well. More than anything, they attacked his age. People accused him of being too old and of being a sort of phony Jackson, a phony general. They even called him a granny general. But ultimately, it was the economy that decided the election. 